Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The Green Slush Fund from the Liberal Party is still happening. That, that scandal is still happening. Of course, we're not hearing anything out of the mainstream media because they are bought and paid for probably by some of the exact same dollars and the exact same people that are being accused of corruption and wrongdoing. I suppose Canadians are going to have to start to look beyond to sources that they can trust, like this one. Now, the House of Commons had a majority vote to have the documents of all of the departments that were touching this, uh, what's known now as the Liberal Green Slush Fund. On June 10th of 2024, there was a majority, a quorum as they call it, and so the um, many departments of the Liberal Party were ordered to surrender unredacted documents to the RCMP to the table them and then they, those documents would then be transferred to the RCMP who could then start to investigate for criminal wrongdoing. And even over the summer, there was more announcements of criminal wrongdoing or at least conflict of interest wrongdoing coming out of the uh, Auditor General. Now, of course, the government didn't comply, even though they were ordered to by the House this, we support the law and order you know, I mean, let's be honest, the liberals say one thing and they never, it never matches their actions. However, before I get into uh, this, I'm going to um, encourage you to hit the like button because the like button will tell them that you're unhappy with the way that they censor Canadians and you're unhappy with the way that they're behaving. Because the government refused to comply with the order of the House, the House now has to make an com unofficial complaint to the chair. And that's um, called an order of privilege, which is to say they have the right to ask that and you shouldn't be denying that. And we are going to appeal to our massive law books that we have because it's parliament and everything is you know written in law. It's codified. So Andrew Scheer had to um, sub or submit this uh, question of privilege to the chair. And I want you to listen to, I, it was 30, 30 some minutes because it's like a court, right? There's a lot of evidence to give, but I cut it down and I just want you to have a listen to all of the facts that are um, against the liberal action. Concerning the failure of the government to comply with the order which this House adopted on Monday, June 10th. A majority of the House voted that day to compel the government to produce a series of unredacted records concerning Sustainable Development Technology Canada, a, bo a body engulfed in Liberal scandal in recent years, leading to it being dubbed the Green Slush Fund, for the purpose of making those documents available to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The government has failed to comply, failed to obey this House order. The current obligation originates, as you know, Mr. Speaker, from the Conservative opposition motion adopted on the heels of an utterly scandalous Auditor General's report. Over the summer, yet another officer of Parliament, the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner, also weighed in, finding the former Liberal hand-picked chair of SDTC guilty of breaking the Conflict of Interest Act twice. Indeed, as a mark of how old the power is, Erskine May treated it as a settled matter in the first edition of his self-titled treatise on parliamentary procedure, published in 1844. The privileges held by the House of Commons are an integral part of the Constitution Act 1867 and the Parliament of Canada Act. These rights include the right to require the production of documents. The privileges in question, like all those enjoyed by the House collectively, and by members individually, are essential to the performance of their duties. The House has the power, and indeed the duty, to reaffirm them when obstruction or interference impedes its deliberation. In the present case, the government has disobeyed a lawful order of this House. It has failed to provide all of the papers which were formerly required by this House, and in so responding, many papers were altered or outright suppressed through the redaction process. On June 10th, the House ordered the, the government to deposit a series of documents concerning SDTC, the Liberal Green Slush Fund, with the law clerk within 30 days. No redactions or other alterations were contemplated by that order, nor was any information permitted to be otherwise withheld. The Department of Finance, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, and the Treasury Board Secretariat each provided only partial responses. 
Several government institutions redacted the records, which they deposited with the law clerk, including the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, the Business Development Bank of Canada, the Canada Revenue Agency, the Canadian Northern Economic Development Agency, the Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development, the Department of Housing, Infrastructure and Communities, the Department of National Defence, the Department of Natural Resources, the Department of Public Works and Government Services, the Department of Western Economic Diversification, Export Development Canada, the Federal Economic Development Agency for Southern Ontario, the Pacific Economic Development Agency of Canada, the Privy Council Office, the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, and the Standard Council of Canada. I would add here that the Department of Natural Resources also decided only to provide the House with records from the Director General level and higher. For those not familiar with government hierarchy, a Director General is a pretty elite bigwig within the government. They are typically at least four layers above your typical frontline worker. Who knows what pertinent information from the front lines, so to speak, was concealed by this maneuver. The House order certainly didn't contemplate this approach. Three other organizations, Mr. Speaker, fall into both of these categories by providing incomplete responses and redacting what they did provide. The Department of Industry, the Department of Justice, and the National Research Council of Canada. For its part, the Justice Department brazenly put the House on notice that some 10,772 pages of relevant documents were, quote, completely withheld. The Communications Security Establishment, meanwhile, simply wrote that it was refusing to turn over any documents, even redacted ones. Then we have the case of the Public Sector Pension Investment Board, the body which manages a quarter trillion dollars of public sector pension assets, which claimed that it is not part of the government. I guess it's not just campaign managers who are distancing themselves from this Liberal Prime Minister. The Auditor General, for her part, also refused to provide documents referring to her obligations under the Auditor General Act to honour whatever security restrictions the government imposes on its information. So not only has the government refused to comply with the House's order, but it has also shackled the Auditor General, an officer of Parliament, from being able to comply as well. Regardless, there is clear and convincing evidence before the House today that a contempt was committed by the government's flagrant and systematic disobedience to the House's June 10th order. So that's put before the chair, and then of course there are other uh, the the parties the other parties get to weigh in on the matter, but the chair gets to make a final decision, and he will have to come back and say that the um, liberal are the liberal party is in is to be in fact in contempt. But when you listen to some of the groups that refuse to surrender documents, you're talking about the whole front bench, right? That MP Varani, who's always talking about how he's, you know, a law and order kind of party and all that stuff, he he refuses to even send over ten th Justice Department, right? The ten thousand people, ten thousand uh, documents, they're just refusing to send altogether. The RCMP will, of course should be given these documents and the fact that you have to redact it the fact that you're hiding something the fact that you refuse to comply is basically telling the people of canada that you don't respect them it's essentially telling the people of canada that they don't have any right to demand anything from you i mean what are we living in some sort of a dictatorship who are these liberal uh, elites that think that they don't have to succumb or or surrender to the will of parliament you heard it i left it in there intentionally the Bosque and Alms fellow figured it to be established in 1844. It was part and parcel of, of the people. It's the will of the people. When the House says it wants something, it's the will of the people. And when you're talking about so much corruption and then they know how much corruption does that spell out? They need to see those documents so they can um, you know, understand completely just how bad and how far the corruption goes, just like the 11 people that are being bribed by foreign governments. I mean, how far will, will Jagmeet Singh and the Bloc Québécois go to support this clearly corrupt and now contemptible government? How much longer are they going to allow this country to be mismanaged so that they can further their own pensions or their own little uh, imaginations? I don't think that we as Canadians should be happy with this behavior. And there's, I saw a clip, or not a clip, I watched the... Um, there was a whistleblower that came in talking about the Green Slush Fund in committee. And of course the liberals were trying to bark at him, but he was really good. Like he held his own pretty strongly. There wasn't so much 
uh, that I was going to make a video on, but I watched it because I, lo- I watch a lot of stuff that has to, pertains to this, even though it doesn't necessarily make it into my videos. Nonetheless, this 10,000 documents, these, these documents that were redacted, that all has to stop. That information has to be surrendered to the House of Commons so that they, in fact, can pass it on to the RCMP and realize it's not like they're giving it to, you know, uh, Pierre Polyev or Andrew Scheer. They're, they put it on the table and then all those clerks who are just lawyers, not just lawyers, but they're lawyers, and they run around, they pick up all the documents and they deposit them with the people that they're, and they itemize and they know when it was put on the table and all that stuff. So there's, it's not like they're, you know, it's just some free for all on these pages. They're still going to be looked after. But the, and of course, the, the Liberal Party knows that. And if they don't know that, then they clearly need to be taught that. So by not putting those documents forward, they are clearly hiding something. And they are hiding something from housing. That's Sean Frazier. They are hiding something from the CRA. They are hiding something from almost every department that touched this. I mean, you heard the list of, of um, government branches that are refusing to comply. So that's just exactly how far this scandal and corruption reaches. I mean, how much longer do we have to tolerate these people who clearly don't respect their position, clearly don't respect the country, clearly don't respect the voting public, clearly don't have any respect for the, for the responsibility, clearly don't respect what did they do with your money. How much longer is Jagmeet Singh and MP Blanchet going to keep Canadians going through this never-ending cycle of liberal corruption? I guess we can only say that it's, uh, it's liberal NDP and block corruption. Because if, if, if I know a guy robs a bank and I don't say something that the guy robbed the bank, I am also committing a crime for not saying, hey, this guy robbed a bank, there he goes right there, he, you know, whatever, what they call accomplice after the fact, it doesn't matter. That I didn't participate in the bank robbery and that I knew about the bank robbery is all the police will need to, you know, charge me. So that's, that, that extends to the NDP and the bloc by, by just that simple logic. That if the Liberal Party is corrupt and you know it and you're doing nothing about it, you are also culpable in that corruption. All right, I'm going to wrap here. What do you think? Do you think that the Liberal Party is hiding something or do you think that they have the right to redact these documents despite the wishes of Parliament? I'll talk to you next time.